Peter and I are heading to Mexico's Rio Lagartos Biosphere Reserve on the Yucatan Peninsula, home to as many as 40,000 American flamingos, one of the largest concentrations of this particular species. I can see flamingos like all clustered together over there. Our guide is Dr. Frank Ridgely from Zoo Miami. He specializes in studying wild flamingos and the habitats that they love. And what he's found is surprising. So this is an actually man-made feature, and they harvest salt. Rio Lagartos is a salty sanctuary, a protected biosphere reserve, and a traditional salt harvesting site, where sustainable methods keep flamingos safe and the salt flowing. This is a very special place. The water will evaporate and creates a hypersaline kind of lagoon. So super salty, so it actually alters the life in that water, and flamingos love hypersaline ponds. What brings them here? Two big things, food, lots of food, mm -hmm. and very special mud so they can make their nests. They have a huge variety of things that they'll eat. Small crustaceans, little plankton, because they're filter feeders. Is that true? That's where they get their color, why flamingos are pink? Yeah, so if they didn't have all the special food out here with all the pigments in it, these flamingos would be white. Flamingos have a built-in filter system. Their upside-down beaks sweep through the muck and water, slurping up algae, brine shrimp, and beta carotenes that give them their iconic color. This dazzling pink is why a flock of flamingos is called a flamboyance. They exploit areas like this where it's super salty, where a lot of animals just avoid because they can't tolerate the conditions. Well, they can go in there and eat the special food that only grows in them. Wild flamingos are thriving here in Mexico. But stateside, it's a different story. 200 years ago, huge colonies of flamingos thrived along the Florida Bay and the Keys. But in the 1800s, they were hunted almost to extinction for their meat and bright pink feathers. Since then, they've mostly vanished from Florida, except for a few migrating flocks. They used to nest in dozens of sites across the Caribbean. And now they're narrowed down to like four major sites and that makes them very vulnerable. And each one of those sites have their own problems. It could be invasive species, it could be land development. So reestablishing them on the mainland of the United States adds to the resiliency of this species. To better understand and preserve the American flamingo, we're joining a team of research experts from the Biosphere Reserve. Ahora lo que estamos haciendo son programas de conservación. Eso es un radiotransmisor que nos va a dar la ubicación, nos va a decir dónde está el flamenco, cómo está el flamenco. Pues ahorita tenemos bastantes flamencos, pero pues no los podemos acabar muy rápido. Si no los cuidamos, si no los protegemos, se van a acabar. Oh, there's that mud. <laughs> First, we need to wade across a slimy, mucky obstacle course. It's not easy to move through here. Oh, it's getting deep, though. Our goal is to carefully catch a flamingo and attach a small GPS tracker. Our guides know just what to do. Trampas que se colocan para la captura de los flamencos. El flamenco va pasando y se atora. The GPS tracker will tell us if the tagged flamingo ever migrates near Florida, and more importantly, if it nests there. It's a delicate mission. With the trap set, we keep out of sight from the flock and hope for a pink payoff. I have to be really quiet because around this little island is the flamingo team, and they're actually herding flamingos closer to us. Oh, yes, I see. Oh, oh I see. This is walking really slow. So far, they don't know we're here. Yeah. They're very alert, though, mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. If you just have one nervous one, they all take yeah. off. Yeah. It looks like he's caught. Oh, it's oh yeah, gone. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. One, yes. One, one. Yeah, tenemos uno. Yes. yes. Eso es bueno. Casi nunca agarramos uno a la primera. Es muy rara vez. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. 